Acute renal failure. This is a rapid deterioration of the kidney's ability to produce urine. Now in the hospital, we recognize this because we monitor your urine all the time, but there's other things that we look for. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about the intrarenal mechanisms that lead to acute kidney injury and why you need to know it and what you can do. This is Tammy with Nurse Minder, and we are in a series right now on kidney functioning and diseases to watch for in the hospital. So if you are a nurse or a nursing student or a healthcare provider responsible for monitoring urine output and patient's blood work, this video is for you. Now, before we dive into the causes of intrarenal kidney injury, let's just take a moment and go back and look at the anatomy quickly of the nephron, which is the working horse of the kidney, because that is where we're going to be focusing our attention today. Now, inside the kidney are a million workhorses, and they're called nephrons. So imagine your blood flow is coming into this circular capsule, and we call this Bowman's capsule, and the blood comes in, and there's this sack inside and it's called the glomerulus and it's got this intricate weave of vessels where the blood is traveling through it's like a maze and then it comes out the other side so the blood coming in is coming from the heart and it gets filtered in here and then it comes out and, and the blood is going to return to the heart now what's happening inside this capsule called the glomerulus is that the urine is being formed and so fluids are being taken out of the vessels electrolytes are being taken out of the vessels glucose, toxins, and its most immediate place is to go from this Bowman's capsule, once the urine is formed, it starts its journey through the proximal tubule. And that's where we're gonna pick up our lesson today. All right, so briefly here, let's just look at this on the board. What I just explained is that Bowman's capsule, the afferent arterial, AF, brings blood into the glomerulus, this maze of vessels. Efferent, EF, arterial, takes blood away back to the heart. Inside Bowman's capsule, and all along the proximal tube are what we call tubular epithelial cells. And this is the functional piece of the tube that helps to move fluids in and out. Now there are three main causes of intrarenal failure. One is ischemia, so we have decreased oxygen related to pre-renal failure. So as I said, go watch that video. We also have toxins, and then we have obstruction. So let's look at these a little bit more closely. The blood flow that we talked about earlier coming into Bowman's capsule, well, there is also blood flow that supplies the tube and the capsule itself. So this blood flow, if it's decreased, then those cells that are reliant, the cells that line Bowman's capsule and the tubule are reliant on oxygen and glucose and electrolytes to do their job. If it's caught early enough, as in pre-renal failure, we can restore functioning. If it's prolonged and we don't notice it, and those cells, they're ischemic, they're going to not be able to function properly, much like us. When we're hangry, if we don't eat right away, our functioning ugh, kind of just fades away, right? And so if we go prolonged without food and nutrition and hydration, we're going to die. Same thing as these cells. Then they're not able to function normally, which part of their role is to help restore balance of fluid and electrolytes as the urine continues down through this pathway. So when it comes to ischemia, there are several conditions you can think about when you're nursing that may put your patient at risk. Are they a burns patient? Have they had extensive surgery? Are they hypovolemic, all part of that pre-renal thought process? Do they have an infection or sepsis? Anything that might be taking oxygen and nutrients out of the blood before it gets to the kidney, which would result in the kidney getting less. Now, the second category is toxins, and toxins can also impact the way the cell functions. Toxin can cause damage to the tube itself so that there's leaking, and toxins can create it such that these epithelial cells and are shedding inwards and cause an obstruction. Now we know there are some medications that we take, you're always weighing out the pros and the cons, that are directly toxic to the kidneys, and we always be monitoring, we always be, and we'll always be monitoring the kidney function. But specifically, toxins that come to mind are cancer, chemotherapy drugs. We're looking at radio contrast when you go for your diagnostic imaging. Um, antimicrobials, such as gentamicin, vancomycin, those are drugs that we already know carry this risk, so we want to be monitoring our patient's health in terms of kidney health regularly. Now the third category is intratubular obstruction. We already know that this can be caused by this toxin damage to the tubular wall itself and causing those epithelial cells to come in and clot and block this, the proximal tubule. And there's also other things, the presence of myoglobin, hemoglobin in the urine, and uric acid all put this 
as a risk factor for your patient. Now there is one condition I want to talk about here that doesn't fit into either of these categories and that is glomerulonephritis. It has an immune origin and what it does is this glomerulus here, remember that maze of vessels that the blood is going through, think of that maze as your sieve for when you're draining your pasta or your vegetables that you've just cooked. And it allows certain things to go through but it keeps others in, in the sieve. So same thing with the blood, as it's going through that maze, there are only certain elements that are allowed out and things stay in the blood. Glomerulonephritis actually changes that ability, we call it permeability, and it widens those holes and more things will, keep, will creep through things that shouldn't be in the urine. So you're going to notice that in your urinalysis. So the things that are going to creep through that shouldn't be are proteins and blood. And so that's when you start to see blood in the urine and your urinalysis will show there's protein. So proteinuria and hematuria. So this is what makes watching urine output so incredibly important and doing your urinalysis and looking at the lab and the data to see just what's going on with my patient because the treatment is going to be specific to the cause. Now in this case, an intrarenal failure, the causes are multiple, so perhaps this is going to be some supportive, like we may be removing medications that are causing the injury. We may be increasing um, fluids and oxygen and uh, giving electrolytes to replace what's missing. It could be removing this obstruction and it could be up to dialysis and kidney replacement. So critical stuff for nurses to know. Thanks for watching. My name is Tammy. This is Nurse Minder. Be sure to subscribe below and share this with your other nursing pals. And if you have anything to add, drop it in the comments below. I love your questions. I love your comments. And I love it when people extend our learning through the discussion. Until next time, make it a great day. And hey, don't forget to get your t-shirt. They're, they're available here on the channel.